In this short, I'm going to clarify all of these topics and make sure that you understand how to diagnose and correctly answer questions that look like this one. You have a man who is sexually active, does not use condoms. He has an intrascrotal nodule that's difficult to distinguish from the left testis. Importantly, this doesn't change on size and supine position, and it does not transluminate. Geez, how do we make sense of this? Well, I'll explain it all, but starting with epididymitis. For this one, you're going to see a fever, dysuria, and also STI symptoms. Here, the swelling would be posterior to the testis. That's what's in the epididymis. It's not going to be within it. And because this patient has no pain, you can easily cross this one out. Now for hydrocele, I want you to think of fluid, because hydro, fluid, and fluid-filled hydrocels are going to transluminate. These are usually soft, and they clearly separate from the testis. Because of this hydro, you should know that it transluminates. Imagine putting a flashlight through water. You'll be able to see that, right? So think of that for hydro and translumination. Easy. Now the syphilitic gummas, this should definitely key you in to tertiary syphilis. And that is years after the infection. Tertiary is a kind of a funny word because you have primary, secondary, tertiary. And that makes me think of years later. And this is actually going to be very rare in the testis. Think more systemic signs with this one. We've crossed out these three very easily. And we're down to these last. Well, varicose seal can be very scary for people. And you know what else is very scary? Having a bag of worms in your testis. I'm not even going to try to animate that. But isn't that very scary? So very scary should make you think of the bag of worms. And the feeling decreases when you're supine and increases with standing. And this is located above the testis, not within it. All right, so because this is painless, solid, intratesticular, non-transluminating, this has to be testicular cancer. So let's do a scrotal ultrasound and let's look at the tumor markers of AFP and beta HCG. For all of my answers, I like to clearly explain exactly what's going on so you can recognize this on test day. The most important thing to know about testicular cancer is that it affects younger patients 15 to 35. It's the most common solid malignancy in young men. And this should be suspected when you have any painless and firm intratesticular mask that does not transluminate or change with position. Now, 95% of these guys are germ cell tumors, and they're divided into seminomas and non-seminomas. The seminomas are slow growing. They might kick out some beta HCG, but never AFP. And the non-seminoma tumors, those are more aggressive. So watch out for those. Now, major risk factors are cryptorchidism. That's when one or both of the testes fail to descend from the abdomen into the scrotum. You just take out that ball. Good thing is prognosis is excellent with treatment. Hopefully this was a nice study reprieve from your doom scrolling. Like and sub if you want to be reminded of random content occasionally. Reach out to me if you want to tutor. Good luck on step one.